Black Clover recently has been drumming up a ton of hype. And this mostly has to do with the Spade Kingdom arc coming to a close in the final arc of the manga starting off. And the most central talking point of these two final arcs has appeared to be devils. Specifically, devils from the Tree of Quelloff. See, during the Spade Kingdom arc, devils were able to escape the Tree of Quelloff and therefore the Underworld. And because of this, we've been introduced to the highest ranking devils in the entirety of the Underworld. We met devils that were said to be the leaders of the Underworld and even met a devil that was said to be the supreme devil who reigned even above them. And now, in the final arc of Black Clover, we've been introduced to Astaroth, a former leader of the Underworld who apparently disappeared for thousands of years, but now has reappeared and is stronger than anybody ever dared dream. But with a myriad of devils being injected into Black Clover's timeline, a lot of people are left confused. I mean, if we're being entirely real, a lot of these devils have relatively complicated names and their powers might get lost in the wash. On top of forgetting which devil is which and what power they might have and what their backstory is, a lot of people are also left asking the question, who's the most powerful out of all of these devils? And while the answer to that question might seem obvious to those of you who are caught up with the manga, I dare to say, it's actually not. So today, in order to confront some of the confusion persisting in the Black Clover community and truly answer who the strongest amongst all of the devils we've seen in Black Clover, we are going to be ranking and explaining every devil in Black Clover. But before we get into all that, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Before we get into all that, guys, today I want to talk to you about a brand new sponsor to the page, Vessi. Listen, I'm not always tied to this chair. In fact, sometimes I'm even touching grass. But as a very naturally cautious person, I like to be prepared for all kinds of possibilities while I'm out touching grass. Specifically, I like to be prepared for rainy days because when it rains in Los Angeles, it rains. See, Vessi makes stylish 100% waterproof sneakers and they want to introduce you to the Dry Socks Club. You see, Vessi shoes are made with a Dymatex material, a dual climate knit material that keeps you cool in the summers and warm in the winters. They are comfortable, lightweight, and incredibly breathable, and not to mention, one of my favorite looking shoes on the market. I mean, look at these bad boys. They're a perfect addition to any wardrobe. Ever since finding out Vessi exists, these have become basically the only sneakers I wear. As somebody who hates wet socks from either me sweating in them and making them wet or the outside making my socks wet through puddles or rain, Vessi has been an absolute game changer. Vessi shoes give me the peace of mind no matter what I'm out doing, be it being at the gym or the grocery store, that my socks are gonna stay dry all day long. And listen, I hear you. There's no way that a shoe this breathable and this fashionable is waterproof. You see this shoe right here? Well, this is a rainy day. And this rainy day isn't going to ruin your day. You see how that water beads up on the front of the shoe there? Little shake, and you're clear. And you better believe that the inside of this shoe is still incredibly dry. So what are you guys waiting for? Vessi is giving away socks to the first 100 people who buy a pair of shoes using my code. In order to claim this deal, use the code on my screen right now. But don't worry, if you're not one of the first 100 people to use my code, there's always all kinds of sales going on on Vessi's website. So what are you guys waiting for? Let's extinct wet socks. Ever since we were introduced to Zogred, the growing threat of devils has become more and more persistent in the Black Clover universe. Every arc we built closer and closer to the underworld being released on the overworld of Black Clover. And as the underworld was emptied, stronger levels of devils were released from deeper sections of the underworld. And while some believe that this had come to a head with the ending of the Spade Kingdom arc, considering the fact that the three leaders of the underworld had been slain, we learned in our most recent and final arc of the Black Clover manga that there's still one more devil that needs to be slain. Astaroth, a devil that was previously a part of the three rulers of the underworld, but disappeared and was replaced by Megicula. But is Astaroth truly the strongest devil? What are his abilities? What makes him the strongest devil? Is there a devil out there right now that we could see become more powerful than Astaroth? And more importantly, who are all of the devils that came before Astaroth and what were their abilities and where do they fall into the grand scheme of power? Well, we're gonna start this video off in the way that we tend to start these videos off. At the beginning, but in this case, it's at the bottom of the list. I'm gonna give an honorary mention to the four devils that won't be making it onto this list right now. And those would be not 
works for medium level devils. Gilmodio, Slotos, Plumed, and Wagner. Gamoldio is a mid-ranking devil that's controlled by Noct. And when Noct uses his devil union with Gamoldio, he's able to use an ability called Pack that gives Noct the ability to make clones of himself. Slotos is also a mid-ranking devil. And when Noct uses devil union with Slotos, he gets an ability called Toughness, which gives Noct the ability to sustain pretty much any kind of damage or magic. Like when we saw Noct use this union to sustain massive amounts of gravity magic. Plumed gives Noct the ability called Agility, which does exactly what it sounds like. It makes Noct a bunch faster. And lastly, Wagner gives Noct the ability called Crow, which allows Noct to release a screeching cry that paralyzes his enemies temporarily. It also gives him the ability to fly. Since these are all mid-ranking devils and in servitude to Noct, there's no way they were going to make this top 10 list, but I figured we should mention them anyways. However, coming in at number 10 is somebody that we've already mentioned in this video thus far. Zagred. Zagred is an incredibly easy number 10 for me, considering the fact that he's the only high-ranking devil on this list. The rest are all highest-ranking devils. Zagred is the true antagonist of the Elfar. He was the mastermind behind the creation of Leak's Five Clover Grimoire. Essentially, to remind all of you who haven't watched Black Clover in a while, Zagred set up a trap that would keep Lemillion Clover Silver, the first wizard king, away for a little while, as Leak was getting married to the first wizard king's sister. During this wedding, Zagred attacks the wedding with an imitation of the first wizard king's life. Light magic. Leaked, assuming that he's being betrayed by one of his closest friends, has his grimoire turned into a five clover grimoire. And it's at this point that Zagred tries to take over Leaked's body. However, the first Wizard King stops this from happening, and Sekere is able to seal away Zagred for 500 years. 500 years later, Patoli is reincarnated into William Von Gis' body. And at the same time, Zagred is released from his eternal prison. Now, Patoli had been going under the moniker of Leaked, but he wasn't actually Leaked. Patoli then has a bunch of elves reincarnate and try to destroy humanity because they believe that the humans destroy the elves, and Zagred tries to take over Patoli's body. But Zagred finds himself in combat against Asa, Yuno, and Yami, and by the end of the battle, finds himself bisected by Yami's Dark Cloak Dimension Slash, after which Asa destroys Zagred's heart with the Black Divider. The fact that Zagred was able to be killed by a pre-time skip Asta, Yuno, and Yami really speaks to his weakness. I mean, we're talking about Asta without a perfected devil union, we're talking about Yuno before he was a saint stage class mage, and even Yami has gotten substantially stronger after the time skip. But this doesn't mean that Zagred himself was necessarily weak. I mean, he did, after all, have an incredibly broken ability called Kotodama magic, which allowed him to magically alter his surroundings using speech. Essentially, Zagred could create either physical or magical items just by speaking. And since he could create magical items, he could imitate other people's magic, like how he did with the first Wizard King's light magic. On top of that, Zagred would show wielding a trident that could dismantle anything it touched and warp the space around it. On top of that, after obtaining a five-leaf grimoire, he was able to summon monsters from the underworld and absorb magic. And he's one of the few people we've seen use reincarnation magic in Black Clover, being able to pull souls out of the afterlife and place them in new bodies. And he did this on a massive scale, bringing back innumerable elves. But the rest of this list is kind of insane, so he's going to sit there at number 10. Coming in at number 9 could honestly be number 8, but number 8 could also be number 9. Because at number 9 and number 8, we have Nahama and Lilith. You see, it's kind of hard to talk about these two not in conjunction. Nahama and Lilith are two highest ranking devils that reside in the first level of the underworld. And while conventional knowledge would tell you that they're exactly the same in terms of their power. In their battle against Noct, we saw some things that would point at Nahama as being the weaker of the two. You see, in the Dark Triad arc, Noct found himself in battle against Nahama and Lilith. And in the opening stages of this battle, Noct was actually able to slice Nahama, but not Lilith. The fact that Nahama sustained damage against Noct when he wasn't truly going all out kind of points at Nahama being weaker than Lilith. But quite honestly, this could have just been Nahama playing with his food. But it's really the only way we have to differentiate these two in terms of power. So while it might seem thin, we're going to put Nahama at number 9. And for the gap between number 10 and number 9 is massive, because Nahama is no joke. You see, Nahama has demon fire magic. And this isn't just your standard fireballs. No, Nahama's fire magic is able to burn everything. It can burn shadows, light, or even invisible concepts like gravity. Yeah, that's right. Nahama's fire magic is quite literally conceptual. On top of that, Nahama is able to turn its body into fire, which allows it to evade physical attacks. On top of that, any fire created by Nahama is kind of an extension of its own body. That is to say that Nahama can merge with its own fire and evade attacks if it needs to. And this flame magic is so complete in its absolution of burning everything that it was able to destroy Nox Unite Mode Equus, which is his toughness unite. Mind you, Unite Mode Equus was strong enough to stand up against the gravity magic of Dante. But the true scary thing about Nahama is that it comes in a tandem with the next entry on our list, number eight, 
Lilith. You see, Lilith is supposed to act as Nahama's counterpart, a foil, if you will. Because when Nahama uses demon fire magic, Lilith uses demon ice magic. And just like with Nahama's demon fire magic, this ice is able to freeze everything, light, shadows, and invisible concepts. And just like with Nahama's fire magic, Lilith is able to merge its body with its own ice to avoid attacks, or even turn its body into ice to avoid attacks, which doesn't really work as well as flame. A little fun fact about Nahama and Lilith is that they're both based off female demons from Jewish mysticism, specifically from the Zohar, which was actually a big inspiration for the Kabbalah. But the true strength of either Nahama or Lilith comes from their fusion. See, after Nahama is cleaved into by Nacht, Lilith Lilith fuses their bodies together, and upon being fused, everything about them gets substantially stronger. Their magical output, their speed, their strength, their durability, they're even able to use both their demon fire and ice magic simultaneously. I'm sorry, it wasn't Noct who cleaved Nachama in half, it was Asta. And it took Noct and Asta working together to kill this fused devil. Essentially, Noct was able to surprise the fused devil and hold it long enough for Asta to catch up with it and cleave it in two. However, even after Asta hadn't killed this fused devil, their magic remained around the castle, implying that their magic magical attribute was so strong that even after their death, the magic would remain. I mean, they were quite literally able to create a massive freezing sun that they threw at Asta. And once Asta sent it back at them, they just merged with it because they can merge with their own magic. For our next entry on the list, we got another woman, Magicula. See, Magicula, like Lilith and Nahama, is a highest ranking devil. And while Magicula is one of the current leaders of the underworld, it wasn't always that way. And this is actually why she is where she is on this list. See, for thousands of years, the leader of the underworld were Lucifer. Pharaoh, Beelzebub, and Astaroth. However, after Astaroth's disappearance, Magicula filled in. But this does not mean that Magicula is anything to scoff at. Being contracted by Vanica, Magicula is a problem. In fact, the entirety of the living world's curse magic, you know, the magic that Gordon and Charlotte use, is based off of Magicula's curse warding magic. And while curse warding magic makes it sound like Magicula's magic specifies in keeping curses away, it is essentially curse magic. It allows the user, aka Magicula, to create powerful curses to either put on themselves or others. And curse magic is one of the most versatile magics in the entirety of Black Clover, as curses can either be beneficial or incredibly useful. Curses can either deteriorate somebody's body or continually reincarnate them. It can weaken enemy spells or give somebody high speed regeneration. And with the power of this curse warding technique, Magicula was able to put lethal curses on both Princess Lilopeshka and Asier Silva, one of which is considered the Saint Stage Mage in Princess Lilopeshka, and the other in Asier Silva, who is considered the strongest female magical knight of her time. These curses also serve another purpose. See, after Magicula forms a contract with Vanica, Magicula wants to find out how powerful she is, so she seeks out Asier Silva. And even though Asier Silva does fatally wound Vanica, Magicula is able to place a curse on Asier Silva. And after Asier Silva succumbs to this curse, Magicula is in control of Asier Silva's soul. Soul, meaning that Magicula or Vanica really can now use steel magic. And this is the true power of curse warding magic. Anybody cursed by Magicula's curse warding magic, once they die, their soul becomes embodied by Magicula, and Magicula receives their magic. And Asier Silva's steel magic was one of the most powerful magics on Earth. Earth. On top of this, since Magicula is in Vanica's body, Magicula can use Vanica's blood magic, which allows Magicula to generate and manipulate blood. If it wasn't for Lux's newly found lightning fiend mode, and Gaja, who is an arcane stage mage, being revived to help in the battle against Magicula, and then the two of them working together to destroy Magicula's body, that the opening probably wouldn't have been made for Noel to destroy Magicula's heart. In fact, Noel, who had already reached Saint Stage level magician at this point, Point, went to destroy Magicula's heart while it was just a heart with no body. And even while Magicula was just a heart, her decaying world curse spell was able to block Noelle's spear. Magicula was then able to reform under the pressure of all of these combatants and start to fire blood spikes at Noelle using Vanica's blood magic. Without Nozelle, Silva sweeping in and creating a bunch of shields to protect Noelle so she could get another crack at stabbing Magicula in the heart, Magicula most likely would have fully reincarnated and probably killed all the mages there. It took two arcane stage mages, Nozelle and a saint stage mage, to kill Magicula. And that's if you ignore the contributions of both Charlotte and Brill, who are also both arcane stage level mages. So while well, obviously, yes, Magicula was a late addition to the rulers of the underworld, she is nothing to be scoffed at. But she's not number six 
Beelzebub. Beelzebub, just like Magicula, is a highest ranking devil and a leader of the underworld. And he made a contract with Xenon. As Xenon is arguably the most interesting of the Zograda's family, we'll do a quick touch on how Xenon and Beelzebub met. Essentially, Xenon was bullied as a child because of his unusual bone magic. However, he had one friend by the name of Alan. And both Xenon and Alan were competing to see who could become their country's version of the Wizard King. However, one day, Alan and Xenon come across a devil. And Alan has to sacrifice himself for Xenon to be able to kill the devil. In an order to kill said devil, Xenon has to pierce Alan's chest with all of his bones. This flies Xenon into a depressive state where he reaches out to Beelzebub and offers a contract between the two. Beelzebub is actually a relatively interesting entry to this whole Dark Triad devil ranking thing. Because during the Dark Triad arc, when Yuno comes across Xenon, he pierces Xenon's heart with his arrow. Specifically with an arrow from his spirit of Euros. Having his heart pierced and almost destroyed makes Xenon make a new contract with Beelzebub. Stating that Beelzebub can have his body and soul as long long as he gets a devil's heart. And upon agreeing on the second contract, Xenon essentially becomes a devil. However, there's a common misconception about this. See, people believe that the devil's heart that was given to Xenon was Beelzebub's, and therefore upon Xenon's death that Beelzebub also died. But this isn't the case. Well, obviously, yes, Xenon did have a contract with Beelzebub and therefore was using his power against Yuno in the beginning half of this battle. After receiving a devil's heart, Xenon became Came kind of his own devil. And while technically Xenon is still tapping into the power of Beelzebub through their contract, in fact, he's still using 100% of Beelzebub's power, he sees an additional power up with the addition of a devil's heart. And this is why we technically never see Beelzebub incarnate like we see Magicula. But regardless of the caveats here, it did take Yuno awakening to his second grimoire to even come close to defeating Beelzebub. In fact, without Finral and Longris there using their spatial magic, both offensively and defensively, against Beelzebub's spatial magic, you Yuno, more likely than not, wouldn't have got the opening to even come close to Xenon or Beelzebub. In fact, without Yuno awakening to star magic halfway through this battle, there was really no chance. And even after awakening to star magic, it was a little bit of BS being sprinkled over the top there to allow Yuno to defeat Xenon. See, Xenon as a host had bone magic, a magic that allowed him to create and manipulate a myriad of bones. He could use it to make whips or defensive meshes. And even if these bones are destroyed, they regenerate almost immediately with the help of the devil. However, Beelzebub's power is spatial magic. And the way that Beelzebub uses his spatial magic isn't the way that Longris or Finral use spatial magic. Essentially, Beelzebub can create monozones, but massive ones. Cubes of spatial magic where anybody within them outside of himself obviously is mana is negated. And the only way to counteract these monozones is to know monozone yourself, basically. Except even knowing monozone isn't really enough. You not only have to know monozone, you also have to be more loved by mana than Beelzebub. Or you have to be a spatial mage who's also mastered monozone. And the thing about Beelzebub is he's not gone. Because it was Xenon who died and not Beelzebub who reincarnated using his body and therefore Beelzebub who died. Now, I'm not gonna say who Beelzebub is now currently residing in because that's a spoiler for those of you who haven't read the most couple recent chapters of Black Clover, but it's not good. Up next after Beelzebub, we have the final boss of the Spade Kingdom arc, Lucifero. Yes, I'm aware I just put Lucifero at number five. But things have gotten pretty wild and I also have a couple of Hail Marys for deeper on in the Black Clover universe, so stick with me here. Lucifero is the third and final leader of the underworld and he made a contract with Dante Zogratis as well as Morris Liebertert. Lucifero has been trying to manifest in the living world for a long time. In fact, when Lucifero found out that Libe had been sent to the living world, he tried to take over Libe's body. However, Asta's mother Rikita was able to drive Lucifero out of Libe's body. Body. Lucifero may not have been the strongest of the three leaders of the underworld in the underworld, but he made a couple of strategic plays in the living world that definitely made him the strongest. See, Lucifero was contracted to both Dante and Morris, which is important because even though Dante is defeated by Yami and Asta before the Spade Kingdom arc even happens, he's healed during the time that everybody else used to prepare, but once again during the Spade Kingdom arc, He's defeated, but this time by Magna, who used a soul chain on him. Essentially, Magna took six months to create a runic spell, a runic spell that connects his soul to somebody else's. And after their souls are connected, it takes the entirety of the power of the two people and equalizes it between them. The way that it's demonstrated, if Dante's power is a thousand and Magna's is two, both of them get 501. And since their magical powers are the same at that point, it turns into a slugfest, quite literally a bare knuckle boxing match, which, Magna wins. 
Titans. Now you could say that this feat doesn't speak to Dante or Lucifero's strength. I mean, he got defeated by one of the weaker members of the Black Bulls. But remember that Magna took six months to create this spell. And Magna is quite literally the grittiest dude in the show. And while technically Magna does win this soul chain boxing match, Dante and Lucifero are still alive after. However, Jack the Ripper decides to finish off Dante so Magna doesn't know that he didn't actually win. The true strength of Lucifero comes from his bind with Morris. See, Morris not only manifests 100% of Lucifero's power, he also manages to copy all of Ulopeshka's knowledge. And with his copied knowledge, he's able to accelerate the advent of Quelloff, opening the three levels of the underworld. However, once again, Lucifero and Morris are defeated. And if not for Lucifero using what was left of Morris's magic in soul to finish the advent of Quelloff, Lucifero never would have been released from the lowest layer of the underworld. And upon being released from the lowest level of the underworld, Lucifero gathered all the low-ranking demons and smashed them into one entity. And amongst these low-ranking demons is also the coffins holding Yami and William Vengeance. This monstrous form grows and grows and grows until Asta slices it in half, destroying the coffins holding Yami and William Vengeance, essentially freeing them, which causes Lucifero to partially manifest from the remains of all of these lower-ranking devils. And even in this incomplete manifestation, he is a problem. Lucifero in this uncomplete manifestation is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Merileona, Brill, Yuno, and then eventually he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe against Noct and Yami, who, mind you, have dark and shadow magic, which means they can use each other's magic. They're basically the perfect duo. And what does Lucifero do to Yami and Noct? He quite literally donut holes them. It takes Asta awakening to a truer form of Unite with Libe to the point where any contact with his body negates magic. And Noct and Yami somehow surviving being donut holed. And you know awakening to star magic that allows him to teleport Lucifero under Asta's blade to knock Lucifero unconscious. Not kill him knock him unconscious. Lucifero doesn't die until Admiralek pulls out Lucifero's heart from his body and flies off with it. See, as Lucifero used the Mass of Devils to give himself form, he never got magic from Dante or Morris, which means that in his devil form, he was only ever using his magic, which was gravity magic. And with the simplest of movement of his hand, Lucifero can make gravity hundreds of times heavy, causing even the strongest knights like Yami or Asta or Nock to struggle under the weight of its power. But it can do more than just make gravity heavier. It can also warp space to evade attacks. It can tear apart magic and destroy concepts. Like when Lucifero was able to destroy Dorothy's dream magic. He's so strong, he broke bones in both Asta and Mary Leona's bodies. And they are arguably two of the most physically strong people in the universe. His magic power is so immense that Henry can't drain it fast enough. For all intents and purposes, He's incredibly broken. So why is he at number five? Well, that is a fantastic question because as we get into our top five here, there's gonna be a couple of picks that make you scratch your head a little bit, but I promise you there's a reason for every single one of them. And coming in at number four, we have the devil who stole Lucifero's heart Adramalek. See, here's the thing about Adramalek. There's very little we know about it. Basically, all we know about Adramalek is that it's a highest ranking devil. The same rank as Lucifero, Magicula, Lilith, Nahama, and it resided on the second level of the underworld. See, Adramalek played a very interesting role in the Spade Kingdom arc. It was released from the second level of the underworld, but it simply watched Lucifero fight. And when Lucifero demanded it to help him, it didn't. In fact, Adramalek had an opportunity to basically kill the entirety of the Clover Kingdom's most powerful knights. After Lucifero Pharaoh was defeated, all of the magical knights in the kingdom were pretty much broken. And it's at this point that Adramalek swoops in and pulls Lucifero's heart out of his chest. And while hypothetically in this moment, considering the fact that Adramalek is a highest ranking devil, it could have killed all of these very injured knights. All Adramalek wanted was Lucifero's heart. Why? Well, we learned from Xenon and Beelzebub what a devil heart can do for you. We saw that Xenon basically became a devil the second a devil heart was put into him. So it's a possibility that Admiralek took Lucifero's heart to put in itself one day, which would give Admiralek possibly all the abilities of Lucifero. Or it's a possibility that Admiralek was giving this heart to Lucius. Either way, the heart of Lucifero is now in Admiralek's hands. And to think that Admiralek possibly put Lucifero's heart within itself isn't that crazy. When we consider the fact that in the more recent chapters, we saw Admiralek lead a group of high-ranking devils along the border of the 
the Clover Kingdom. This was meant to act as a distraction so Lucius could cause some trouble in the Clover Kingdom capital. Mind you, this happens a year and three months after the Spade Kingdom arc. Everybody is significantly stronger from what they were in the Spade Kingdom. And yet this group of magical knights that are comprised of the Golden Dawns, the Black Bulls, and Yuno you know, aren't able to even lay a finger on Adramalek. Even though Yuno know wipes out an entire army of high-ranking devils like that. Mind you, Zogred was a high-ranking devil, meaning that Yuno know is now basically able to one-shot Zogred level threats. And yet, Adramalek was able to avoid his attacks somewhat effortlessly. So when you take this into account and the fact that Adramalek might have Lucifero's heart, it's hard to not put him above Lucifero. Essentially, when you consider the fact that Adramalek is working hand in hand, with Lucius, also known as Astaroth, who is our next entry on the list. I know what you're saying. You're saying, Nick, the pinnacle devil of the final arc of Black Clover is number three on your list? And I am not trying to take anything from Astaroth's abilities. Astaroth, in the very little amount of time we've seen him, was basically able to solo the entirety of the Clover Kingdom's magical knights. On top of this, he stomped a perfect Union Asta that defeated Lucifer. And mind you, Asta has had a year and three months to work on this perfected Union. A perfected Devil Union with Libe that quite literally makes his entire body anti-magic. And it's not like Astaroth was going up against weakened versions of these knights like Lucifer. Because obviously Lucifer was fighting knights who had been fighting highest ranking devils for hours. Everybody Astaroth fight was not only stronger than the knights that Lucifer came up against, they were also incredibly well rested, with no arms missing or holes in their chest. But why is Astaroth this strong? Well, the three leaders of the underworld were said to have three kinds of magic. Space, gravity, in time, and Astaroth has time magic, which gives Astaroth the ability to slow down or speed up or completely halt time. See, Astaroth has a contract with Lucius, Lucius Zogratis, the oldest of the Zogratis family, with his siblings being Dante, Vanica, and Xena. And Lucius wants to create a world where humans have undying bodies, and thus nobody will ever die again, creating peace. Oh, I'm stupid. I just remember that Lucius went to the lowest level of the underworld and defeated the other half of Lucifero and then ate Lucifero's heart. And now Lucifero lives within Lucius. So no, Adramalek doesn't have Lucifero's heart anymore. I'm sorry, it's been a couple of weeks. His feats against Yuno still hold up though. So after taking control of Lucifero, Astaroth now has time magic and gravity magic. And on top of that, since he went to the lowest level of the underworld while he was there, he took control of all the high-ranking devils. And upon gaining Lucifero's power in combination with his, he figured it was time to kill Asta. And thus, a year and three months later, after the Spade Kingdom arc, Lucius appears in front of Asta and freezes time everywhere. The only person able to break out of this time magic is Asta using the power of anti-magic. And then after freeing himself using anti-magic, he frees everybody else. Those being all the Clover Kingdom captains, couple of vice captains, couple of lieutenants, you get it. But as Lucius and Asta engage in their battle, and as Lucius tries to use time magic on Asta, he realizes that Asta's anti-magic is countering the time magic. And it's at this point that Lucius decides to switch tactics, deciding instead to use his soul and teleportation magic. See, Lucius, on top of having gravity magic and time magic, also has soul magic that allows him, by physically touching somebody, to alter their soul. Meaning that he can bend somebody entirely to his will, rewrite their personality simply by coming into contact with them. So Lucius begins to teleport around Asta, and by using his gravity-boosted strength, beat on Asta the old-fashioned way. But when Asta coats himself in anti-magic, even this doesn't work. And so Lucius does the thing that every single bad guy does in their first fight against the main character so they can have a later fight, pulls a Hail Mary that completely negates the validity of the fight. Essentially, Lucius teleports to somebody important in Asta's life and then turns them into a devil. Lucius is able to do this because Lucius himself is technically a paladin, meaning that he is not devil or human. He has completely purified the power of devils and therefore is simply able to tap into devil power as a conduit to make himself stronger without the possibility of his devil incarnating in him. Lucius is able to make other people into paladins and thus he makes somebody close to Asta a paladin and pulls Beelzebub out of the underworld and slaps it into them, which leads to Lucius and his newly made paladin basically kicking the shit out of of Asta. The reason this Hail Mary kind of negates the fight is because obviously Asta doesn't want to kill the person who was just made into a paladin. So if this devil can use time, soul, and gravity magic, how is he number three? Well, I'd be lying to you if I said the next two entries on this list aren't a little bit of a pull, but at the same time, they're not. Coming in at number two on our list above Astaroth, yes, we have Lucifugus. But why would I put Lucifugus, who we know next to nothing about, 
over every other devil on this list? Well, for a couple of reasons. One, Lucifugus was able to overpower the devil binding ritual, meaning that when Lucifugus was summoned by the House of Faust, the house Knox belongs to, he was able to reach his influence outside of the confines of the devil binding ceremony, being able to almost immediately kill every single onlooker, some of which were very powerful mages. And mind you, the devil binding ceremony purposely suppresses the power of devils. The devils summoned using the ceremony are significantly weaker than they would be if they were released. But that isn't even the real reason I'm putting him this high on the list. The real reason I'm putting him this high on the list is because in the real life Quelloff, the thing that the Black Clover Quelloff is based off of, Lucifugus actually occupies one of the three top positions in hell, it being Lucifugus, Beelzebub, and Satan. Lucifugus is actually said to be the prime minister of hell, being in charge of hell for Satan. And his name in Latin actually means to flee from light, which implies that his magical affinity is most likely either dark or shadow magic. And a lot of people believe because in current events that happened in Black Clover in our last chapter that we found out about Yami, and because Lucifugus's name implies that he might use dark magic, the Yami might have a connection to Lucifugus. On top of all of this, Lucifugus is referred to as the Supreme Devil, the one who sits above the three that rule the underworld. And if Lucifugus sits above the three that lead the underworld, one of which was Astaroth, I believe we're going to see Lucifugus take a big step forward in the last arc of Black Clover. Maybe through the medium of Yami. But if the Supreme Devil is two, Who's won? Oh, come on, you knew it was Libe. Yes, I know you could absolutely make a case for Libe being the weakest devil on this list. He's a scrawny devil with no magical power. In fact, because he has no magical power, he was quite literally thrown out of the underworld. But let's be real here. In a world dominated by magic, anti-magic is the most powerful thing, especially when you're coming up against the likes of devils that are going to be focusing 100% of their power on the power of their magic, because that's the leg up they have on humans. They have a significant amount more magic that they can use to suppress humanity. And we saw what happened when Dante came to blows with Magna. When they had equal amounts of magical power, Magna's grit and human determination was able to give him a win over Dante. So what happens when you take away the magic from devils? I mean, there's a reason that Lucius had to play a dirty trick against Asta. Asta was able to counter his gravity time and soul magic, technically, because Asta has countered soul magic previously. In a world dominated by magic, there is no more powerful technique than getting rid of somebody's greatest strength. Especially when you consider the fact that even after Ost is able to counter your magic with his anti-magic, he is a 5'6 chode of a man swinging a 200 pound hunk of iron. Oh, and he can fly at insane speeds with his devil union ability. Not to mention he's also able to coat his entire body in anti-magic, meaning that even if you do hit him with a technique, it'll be countered. So while yes, of course you can make the argument that Libe is the weakest devil on this list, because with Without his union with Asta, he wouldn't stand a chance against anybody on this list. He's the main character's devil. By the end of the show, he's going to get as much character growth as Asta, and he's going to be unequivocally the strongest devil out of all of them. Libe, just like Asta, is going through the hero's journey. So while based off current feats, Libe isn't the strongest devil. Let's all be real with ourselves here for two seconds. What do you guys think? Are you enjoying these new chapters of Black Clover? Do you think my list is correct? Tell me in the comments below. And while you guys are down there, please, for me. Like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, stop waiting for the show to come back. Just go read the manga. You're just hurting yourself.